Hello, beautiful people. It's your girl, Miss Eileen. And today I want to talk to you about YouTube. You know, we all want to get more views and grow our YouTube channel. We want to get more subscribers. We want to also serve the people that we are creating content for. We have this valuable content and we want to make sure that the right people get to see it. And so one of the things that we have and we can use to our advantage on YouTube is our thumbnails. You need to have great titles. You need to have great descriptions, but you also need to have good thumbnails in order to, as they say, get that click. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And I want to thank those of you who are joining live. And for example, my good buddy, Marion, whose show I was just on a little earlier. I'll be sure to leave links in the description about that. And also Dryer Buzz, an original digital from Atlanta. Thank you for sharing Dryer Buzz. Okay. I'm in my home office. Y'all, so you know, it's about to get serious, right? <laughs> so I'm not on my normal setup. So if you see me uh, hesitate, that's because the buttons that I need to push are a little different and they're in different places. Okay, but that's all right. We're going to talk about click-through rate. You know, in my last video here, I showed you how I was getting all kinds of crazy traffic. Oh, wonderful flood of traffic coming to my YouTube channel from Google search. Okay. Be sure you go back and watch that video because Google search is everybody knows Google owns YouTube. So getting traffic from Google means that you are getting that targeted traffic that are people who are searching. They're searching for your topic. Okay, so it's very important. And Marion and I, I'll put her comment up again. Marion and I and her co-host, our other co-host this morning, her name is Lady Lou. We talked about this a bit and I thought this is a good opportunity to really dive down into what's called click-through rate, CTR. Now, I've been familiar with click-through rate, CTR, for a long time, ever since I started blogging back in 2009. And it's just been in the last, I'll say two years that we were actually able to see that information on our YouTube uh, studio and our analytics. Now you could always see it with your website. If you have Google analytics, you could see your click-through rate so what happens? Think about the mindset that you have when you're looking for something. I'll use my friend. You guys hear me talk about Mr. Rodney. I'll use him as an example. Mr. Rodney has uh, a lawn care business. That's one, one of the many things he does. And so he has a couple lawnmowers that he knows that he wants to take some parts, pieces from one and put on the other. Akil, hello, how are you? And Shawana, how are you? Thank you for coming. So, oh, the other thing is he just got a smartphone. Mr. Rodney had, oh, had a flip phone for the longest. Hello again, my, my good buddy, Studio Geek 32. And so what he's been doing is going out on YouTube University and he's new to the whole smartphone thing. So sometimes he goes on Google as well. So now he's got a specific kind of lawnmower that he's searching for. He likes to use the lawn boys. All right. So, but someone gave him a craftsman. All right. So now you got this in your head. Somebody gave him a craftsman, but he knows he needs to do some maintenance on it because it's been sitting for a while. The, the uh, guy's father passed away. And um, so he's going to go on YouTube and or he's going to go on Google looking for, you know, how to do maintenance on a 
craftsman lawnmower or how to repair the carburetor on his lawn boy lawnmower. All right. So when he goes there and he's searching, what's the first thing he's going to do? Of course, he's going to look at the title and YouTube and Google are both very good with when you put things in the search bar, they're pretty much going to bring up things that are may not be exactly what you're looking for, but they do their best and they're the best search engines on the planet, right? So they pretty much serve up the relevant information. So now what else does he have to go on? He's got these titles that will talk about the craftsman or the lawn boy, lawnmower, right? But he's also going to look at those thumbnails and see which one, you know, because there's lots of models of craftsmen and there's lots of models of lawn boys. So he's going to be looking for if somebody's got a picture of the one that looks like the one that he needs, right? So this is just an example that I wanted to bring to your attention. The same way with me, I do all kinds of tech tutorials. I like to try to make sure that if I'm talking about a specific app or a specific platform that my thumbnail tells some kind of story. Now, I got to be honest, I'm not always good at this. And it's the good thing about it is with YouTube, even when you aren't doing good, there's always a chance to go back and make good on the mistakes that you may have made. And sometimes you think you have this dynamite thumbnail. Like, I know that thumbnail, first of all, it's pretty. And it has the words there that people may be searching for. And it's got a picture of the, and sometimes it just doesn't do well. So the advantage is that you can change them. You can change them. And Studio Geek, he admits as well that he's not the best with thumbnails. Okay. All right. So now that we have talked about thumbnails and the reason why it's so important uh, one more thing before before I get off of that topic. Uh, yes, and Marion, we had that discussion. She says she'll be going back and changing some of hers. Great, Marion. All right. You also don't want to have anything misleading on your thumbnail. Okay, that's very important because, I mean, years ago, and of course, people don't do it as much now, but years ago, People will have a video and it could be about anything. It could be about uh, the history of pencils and they would have girls with cleavage showing and all that kind of stuff. Or it could be a sexy guy with his shirt off and that has nothing to do with pencils, right? <laughs> so, you know, YouTube has refined its search engine and it knows now it can go by. Once somebody clicks on that, so if I see this, this guy with this shirt on, it looks like he's getting ready to do a workout video, right? Well, I should say with his shirt off. And he looks like he's getting ready to do a workout video because he's all pumped up and everything. And I click on, and it's about the history of pencils. I'm going to click away right away. That's why YouTube started looking at watch time as being a really important factor in ranking videos and whether or not they're going to show your video to new viewers. Okay. So now let's get really down <laughs> into and why did they do that? Because Studio Geek, it used to work. That's been so long ago now. I can't even remember how long ago that was. <laughs> Doesn't work anymore. Okay. So what do uh, CTR, it means click through rate and let's do a little bit of a screen share. All right. So now we're looking at my channel and my studio and um, analytics. Yeah. So I've gone onto my analytics and I've clicked on this tab here that's called reach. Reach. All right. Over here on the right hand side is where I'm going to see this click through rate. Okay. And so I see that it starts off with impressions. Now I'm going to explain, describe that in a minute. And then the click through rate, meaning 
all these people who saw my video thumbnail and they, you know, they saw my description, my thumbnail and all that. How many of them actually clicked? And my click through rate has started going up. And this is only on YouTube. This doesn't have anything to do with the traffic and things that I was telling you about with Google. This is just on the YouTube platform. So I clicked on this and I, to, to get more information, learn more. So now let me, let's go over to learn more and see what it says. How do I know whether my impressions click through rate is high or low? And I'm not going to read it word for word, but I'll just read a little bit of it. Impressions click through rate measures how often viewers watch the video after seeing a registered impression on YouTube. Some views don't count towards impressions like views on external websites or from end screens. So remember I said those views on people seeing my video on Google, that doesn't count. This is only clicks that people are seeing your thumbnail on the YouTube platform. Okay. Uh, because of this, your impressions click through rate or CTR likely represents a subset of your channel's total views. I'll read this next part too. Impressions click through rate will vary based on the type of content audience and where you, where on YouTube, the impression was shown video thumbnails are always competing against other videos on the homepage and up next in search results and more. Okay. So you got a lot of competition out there. <laughs> you got a lot of competition out there in vision 2020. Hey, how are you? You got competition out there too. So it's important that you not only try to optimize your thumbnails so that when people see it amongst all those other thumbnails, and I also talked about this a lot in my video where I talked about morning fame because morning fame is an amazing tool that you can use. You can sign up for that at eileen.link slash morning fame. And one of the things that Morning Fame will do is it will email you so that you can see those thumbnails that are competing against your video. And I'm just going to take a minute to put that link in the chat here. And you can sign up for a free trial for Morning Fame. And make sure you go back and watch that video. And I'll put a YouTube card over here, <laughs> I think. Anyway, so your YouTube has decided what your keywords are that you're trying to rank for. And then it will also have other people's videos that are trying to rank for those same keywords. And so this is another thing. If you think you've got that little perfect thumbnail, right? Remember, there's all different places where your thumbnail is going to be shown. On the YouTube homepage, in the subscription fee. So even your subscribers are going to see your thumbnail and you're actually competing with the other channels that your subscribers have subscribed to, right? Because if you go to your subscription, you'll feed, you'll see there's a bunch of videos there. And they're about all different topics. Cause you know, when you're on YouTube, you don't just subscribe to just one topic, right? You've got all various topics, right? And so maybe they just feel like watching your video that day, even though it may not be a topic that they even know what it is or what they're interested in. That's your subscribers. Okay. But then you've also, what they call up next, uh, or I would like to call it suggested videos that you see when you're on desktop or when you're on your mobile, they'll be underneath when you're on desktop, they're over on the right hand side. I realize everything is opposite, but this is my right. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and there's a column over there that shows you suggestions because YouTube knows that you search for a specific topic or you're watching a video from one of your channels that you subscribe to. And YouTube thinks, Hey, you're probably going to watch this 
want to watch this, these videos next because this person is popular or because people that subscribe to your channel also subscribe to that person's channel, or here's other videos from that person whose video you're watching. So you've got competition. Okay. That's why your thumbnails are so important because you want to make them so that they're eye catching. You want to make them so that when somebody sees that thumbnail, they know what your video is about. And Alfredo says, yes, you are live. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. On that note, let me clear my throat. Yes, I'm live. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. And now, so here's what you can do. Here's what you can do. First, you may not be graphically inclined. You may not be a designer. Okay. Note the go-to channel is gone on the profiles of the guests. I'm not sure what you're talking about, Alfredo, but so that why the guests do not move from the channel. Thanks, Alfredo, but I really don't know what you're talking about and what that has to do with click-through rate, which is what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's probably very useful information, but I, I, my mind, I can't switch gears right now. So like myself, I'm not that good at design. I know a little bit because I actually used to work in a graphic arts department, but I was never formally trained on uh, art. I know when something looks good, but sometimes when I make it, it uh, leaves a little to be desired. So one of my favorite things to do is to use templates. Now, some of you guys, um, I love sharing like you do. Oh, okay. You're talking about sharing the video. Now I get it. <laughs> Thank you so much. So yeah, if anybody wants to share this out and I always say two taps, go ahead and hit that share button. And you know, when you share it, especially if you're sharing on Twitter, YouTube likes to take the credit, but you can change it. That is not via YouTube. It's via Eileen, I-L-E-A-N-E. But you can wait because I didn't do a thumbnail for this video yet. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> but like I said, we always have the opportunity to get back. So some of you guys may be using Canva. Canva has templates in there for YouTube videos. There's also another popular tool called PicMonkey that I've used and some of you may have uh, be familiar with and I they have templates in there for YouTube videos as well and I on occasion I have used uh more so the PicMonkey templates because um I, I'm not completely sold on those templates yet I don't think that they are geared toward my kind of content in my audience. All right. Oh, there's Richard. And he says, I use Canva, Miss Eileen. I've heard of PicMonkey. Yes. Thank you so much. And Alfredo. Yes. It's been going for two days now. Oh, thank you, Shumana. Okay. Right. And my mind just goes a mile a minute. All right. Well, slow down. You know what they say? Usa. <laughs> I had to take a pause for Alfredo, y'all. Okay. So <clears throat> some of the templates that they have in PicMonkey and Canva, they tend to be more things that are for like fashion and crafting type of things and uh, e-commerce. And um, I, my videos aren't about that. I do tech videos. So for me, a lot of those thumbnail templates weren't that great. But what I did was I found out that my buddy, Roberto Blake, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know who Roberto Blake is. He developed a set of templates 
And I just posted my affiliate link. I am an affiliate for his templates and I do use his templates from time to time. And it's called the YouTube starter kit. I'll put that up on the screen. And so you just go to Eileen, that's I-L-E, A-N-E, Eileen dot link slash starter kit slash starter kit. Okay. So go there and you can check out his uh, templates and he gives you tons of them. You know, um, right now, I can't think of the price of the templates off the top of my head, but they're well worth it. And they work with Canva or Photoshop. Okay. So another thing that you will want to think about when you're creating your thumbnails is the type of text that you're going to put on your thumbnail. You kind of want to limit it. I know that we always like to use these beautiful handwritten fonts, especially if we're making images for Pinterest. Okay. <laughs> yes. We like to have that. We like to mix and match our fonts and all that. But on YouTube, you want to have, especially when you're new and you're trying to get attention. I'm not saying go look at some big YouTuber that has like 100,000 subscribers and do what that person does because they already got attention. All right. But somebody who's just trying to get more subscribers, just trying to build up steam and trying to get their videos out there. You want to have bold, chunky text and high contrasting colors, bright, vivid colors on your thumbnails. Okay. Your branding may be this very cutesy mauve or this muted pale pink. That's nice. That's, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. But on your thumbnail, don't use that. <laughs> don't worry about your branding. Worry about, like I said, put yourself in the mind of the searcher, the person that's looking for your topic, your content, whatever it is that you're offering value about and think, how do I get that person's attention? And like I said, when you get that morning fame, you're going to see the other videos that are competing with yours. Perfect. I'm going to buy those templates. Thanks. Oh, sure. Marion and bold text and bright colors. Yes. Yes. Welcome chat people. Glad you are here. Oh, thanks for welcoming everybody. Alfredo. Okay. So here's what you can do. If you've already gone over to your studio, your YouTube studio, and checked out your click-through rate. Now I'm going to bring that back up on screen share because I'd already checked mine out and I wasn't that happy with mine. Okay. Right now you see it says 4.9%. And this is based on the last 28 days. And I mentioned that I had a nice surge of traffic on here, but let's go back. Let's, let's go back to 2019. It was 3.9 click-through rate. Believe it or not, that 1% is a lot. That, that makes a, a difference of a lot of views to have a higher click-through rate. Now, on the other hand, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Let's go the other way because I've been experimenting with my thumbnails. All right. So now we're just going to go over the last seven days. You know, now that I've been home and I've had, you know, more time working from home. I, that time when I would be in the car on the way to work, I can sit, go through my old thumbnails, find ones that need to be updated. And that's what I've been doing. And so already now I'm up to 5.1. So 4.9, 5.1, very good. It's still progress, okay? So I went all the way from 3.9 up to 5.1. And, you know, uh, click-through rate is not just based on thumbnails. So I don't want you to just focus on that because you also have to have a good title. 
You also have to have a good title. You're going to use other tools to do your research on what people are searching for. You know what your content is about, but you might not be sure what people are searching for. So let's see. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I had my, got a little dry. I'm in a different room. I told you guys that, right? <clears throat> so let's see. I'm going to um, get over here in these. Oh, there's a wealth of information of what you can find in here, all right? So let's just look at traffic sources. Remember, I'm on the reach tab, traffic sources, and I'm going to go into YouTube search. All right, because we're just talking about YouTube click-through rate today. And now I'm going to click see more because I want to see more of the things that people are searching for. So people are searching for, and my these videos that I've done about the Facebook watch party, they are going through the roof. The Facebook watch party, watch party Facebook. Of course, people are searching for StreamYard. I'm getting very well known as being someone who has introduced a lot of people to StreamYard because I've been doing these videos about StreamYard for years, how to go live on Twitch. Another topic, all right? Periscope, I'm not sure why that's like an anomaly there. <clears throat> or, um, this is just the last seven days. In fact, let's Let's go back to the 28 days. All right. And we may even go back to all of 2020 to give you a better picture. So this is what you want to look through, you know, and you can change these date ranges. Maybe you don't have enough data in here because, you know, you may not be getting that much traffic. So you just expand your time frame. So let's just go to 365 days. All right. Because you're going to see this is going to drastically change for me because a lot of people were searching for anchor podcasts. Why do you think I have a whole podcast called The Anchor Show? Because I know that people, and look how much time they were spending watching my videos, five minutes watching my videos about anchor. Okay. So you want to go through here expand this as much as you can, you know, depending upon how long you've been on YouTube and how many videos you have out there. And hey, 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 my buddy Reg is here. Hi. Did you get my Snapchat this morning? Oh my gosh. Sorry. <clears throat> Side note, y'all. Reg and I are starring in the most amazing Bitmoji movie ever on Snapchat. <laughs> Bitmoji TV. Yes, that's my co-star there, Reg. <laughs> All right. That was a side note. I just had to put that out there. <clears throat> uh, okay. And Alfredo says he's still out there delivering in the field, delivering smiles because Alfredo is working with Amazon. So <laughs> uh, audience, I need to research home remedies for dry throat for talking a lot. <laughs> yeah, I probably would be a lot better if I wasn't in this room. And um, usually when I'm in here, I'm just working. I'm not talking. But, you know, you got to switch things up. That's another thing. Switch things up. You know, you've been making uh, thumbnails that look a certain way. Maybe you always like to use the blue and the red or the yellow or whatever. And then all of a sudden, you just switch things up. You just put a purple thumbnail. Don't worry about people uh, not knowing it's you, and you or maybe you don't have your logo on there. Calm down, y'all. Don't nobody know who you are. So... Don't worry about that yet. <laughs> uh, Brian G. Johnson did an amazing experiment. Brian G. Johnson TV. Okay. It's just like it sounds, Brian, just to spell the regular way. I want you to go back and look at his, in fact, let's do it. I'm going to look at his thumbnails. Okay, guys, because I want you to see something that he did. And he talked about this all in his videos about this, you know, change that he made. 
So hang on, let me get it all prepared before I start screen sharing. You know, it takes a while. So it's B-R-I-N-G Johnson. And his channel exploded when he made a change to his thumbnails. Okay. And it's so super simple. You'll see that you didn't even need design skills in order to make these changes that he made. All right. So let's just go over here. Look at these thumbnails. The truth tags. Do this. I dare you. Look. Compelling. You want to find out what he means about tags and do this. What? <laughs> do what, Brian? Yes, I want to click on that. All right. YouTube secrets. Let, let's show you what his old thumbnails. These are the thumbnails before he switched to that simple format, making the funny faces, which you see a lot of YouTubers like to do, right? Or pointing at you and using those bright contrasting colors. Okay. And I don't, you know, when I said bright colors earlier, I might not have mentioned the word contrasting. Yes. You don't want two bright colors. You don't want a bright yellow and a bright pink because they don't contrast. Okay. So you see what he's done, the brilliance of what he's done with his thumbnails and it has caused tremendous growth not only on his views, but also on his subscribers. So let's just guess. <laughs> um, Reg says, yes, ma'am. Love Bitmoji TV. Yeah, it's getting better and better. So if you've never uh, downloaded the Snapchat app and make yourself a Bitmoji and get the Bitmoji TV, subscribe to that. It's, it's amazing. It will actually have you entertained, totally entertained. We probably need to moisturize the room, add more humidity. Yeah, I probably do. Just finding this. this is my first time ever doing. No, I did live streams from here before. I was sitting down and I was on my phone. So I probably was, it probably was much more easy for me to hydrate than right now. I'm using the stand up desk. Oh, by the way, this is the first time I ever did a YouTube video with a stand-up desk. All right, so I'm mixing it up. So I just want y'all to know, I practice what I preach, okay? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Audience, please research how to add moisture in a dry room with speaker from getting dry voice. Okay, Alfredo, thank you. I appreciate it. Got an app for you to check out. iRig Recorder for podcasts and also record video. Yes, I heard about iRig. I never... um. Uh, I guess I never really felt the need to use it. Are you using a laptop? Shh, don't tell anybody. Yes, it's a PC. <laughs> oh, and uh, what what you have a stand up desk? Yes, I do. And I don't think I have the pictures anywhere on this computer. Wait, maybe I do. Maybe I do have that in my um, Google Photos. Let's see if I can bring that up real quick, because that's a good question. Uh, let's just think about, like I said, you got, you have to switch things up sometimes, and that's one of the things I decided to do today. I decided, look, let's just do something completely different. <clears throat> and... Uh, as I'm scrolling through here, let's see, you guys got any more questions there? Okay, here we go. Here's a here's a, a view of my, actually, this was one day when I was taking some pictures for Snapchat. And I said, this is my view from my stand-up desk. I guess you can see it best here and here. And, you know, actually, it's um, it's a shelf that collapses. You know, so for example, if I wanted to go down, I could go down and I'll bring it back up. <laughs> oh, maybe that's right there is where I wanted to. <laughs> okay, so yeah. <clears throat> so uh, I think I'll be able to keep this because this is actually something that I had for work. But eventually we're getting remodeled when things get back to uh, 
when the remodeling project can begin again and the the desk will actually be a stand up desk, you know. Okay. <laughs> oh, I saw that on Instagram. So see, you already knew that. <laughs> what you switch from Mac to PC. Yeah, I can do that whenever I want. Most of the time I don't want, but today I just figured out, you know, I'm showing off. Cause when I was on live with Marion, I'm not sure she's still here or not. When I was on live with Marion on her natural curiosity show, her and Lady Lou, I was on my Mac and it was their show, but I was a guest, but I was on my Mac, but I decided I wanted to come in my home office, which I normally um, don't do any recording there. <laughs> Oh, Marion said, yes, I'm still here. Like, what you think? I went over there and I bought that YouTube starter kit from Roberto Blake and I'm back. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just so you know, I did not switch. This is just, I'm switching things up for today. Believe me, I miss my Ecamm Live, so I got to get back on that Mac. But it's fun to have um, StreamYard here. Oh, and as a matter of fact, <clears throat> If uh, someone wants to join me, I'm going to send out invitations to people that I think may want to join me on CAM because that's one of the reasons why I use StreamYard today and I just totally forgot. And so I am going, I'm, right now I'm opening up Facebook Messenger in the background and I'm going to send that special link to join on camera. So go ahead and fluff up your hair. And I'll see if I can uh, get a message sent out. This uh, computer doesn't move as fast as mine. That's another thing. It's my Mac, I should say. And Marion, here you go. Here's that link if you wanted to join on Cam. Alfredo. Here you go. And I know Red, you usually don't want to do it. And I don't have, oh, Marion is ready. Ready. Oh, hi. Hey, lady. Hey, I just have to have my hair fluffed. <laughs> yes, it looks uh, amazing too. <laughs> yeah, we both changed our, we, we, we moved things around. Yeah, from this yeah. morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad we had that conversation this morning and that inspired me to have this to talk more about click-through rate because I, I figured you know some folks don't know uh what it is i didn't know i mean ctr i thought you'd tell us so i didn't even look it up i thought okay we're going to be talking about ctr today good all right whatever that is <laughs> okay so let's bring up some of the comments because i see uh, I, lo I love it when the chat, when you guys all are talking amongst yourselves and there's a whole other conversation going on here. And like this one, I love Reg says the studio geek seen your latest video. Good job. Yes. I said the same thing. I saw studio geek earlier this morning. Cause this is my third live stream today. I was on, <laughs> I was on Twitch and I told studio geek, I loved his latest video and uh, Alfredo says, I sort of have a stand up setup, but why did you choose a stand up desk? I, Alfredo, <laughs> he reminds me of my uncle, because I wanted to switch things up. I said that like eight times. Okay, everybody, I'm not being mean now, Alfredo. He knows I'm just messing with him. <laughs> I may look into an affordable Mac OS just to get into programming to iOS. Oh, that's wonderful, wonderful. Me, I can join today. Pick me, me. But well, all right, I already sent Alfredo the link. So he's all like, pick me, pick me. He ain't got in here yet. <laughs> Someday you are going to try vMix. I don't see the need for trying vMix, be honest with you. What is vMix? vMix. Oh, got me 100. Hi, how are you? vMix is a, another switcher. Like, for example, I typically use the Elgato Stream Deck when I'm on my Mac. I actually have an extra stream deck. I could put that here on the PC. But 
VMix is a switcher that allows you to switch to different camera views, to switch to different scenes that you may have set up in your software. And VMix uh, primarily works with PCs. That's why I don't have it because typically I live stream on my Mac. And uh, is it a software or a piece of hardware? It's hardware. Oh, okay. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's software. It's software. Yes. And it works with the hardware, which is X keys. And uh, you can program it that way. So VMix is also like a live streaming thing. Oh, gosh. Frankenstein Friday and Miss Celine wants to invite folks on camp. Ugh. <laughs> Don't worry, Reg. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. So, Marion, let's see. What do you have your action plan? I know we talked, but <clears throat> tell me what you think. I wrote it down as you were telling me. Okay. So you told me it's very important to make sure my title and my topic are on point and that they need to go first instead of the name of my show. Cause I've always had the name of my show, then the date and then the topic title. So I learned that I need to go back as I have time and fix those titles so that it's more user friendly. And uh, also that people can search. So I'm really uh, that that made me feel so good because, you know, when you first get started with YouTube, you don't know what you're doing and you just kind of go and then you have to look back and say, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> OK, so uh, we're also going to bring Alfredo in. Uh, hey, Alfredo. Hi, Miss Eileen. Thank you for having me on your show. Uh, I was watching, uh, I think, Miss Marion and you on the previous show that you sent the link to me. Mm -hmm. I'm actually writing in the comments like timestamps like oh this is where it was it's pretty cool okay thank you oh and then Lindsay is here oh oh her comment jumped Lindsay oh there it is Lindsay Hazel hey there Eileen I don't forget the e on the end Lindsay thank you baby I, and I um Reg is saying what what's up I'm not sure who he's saying that to but yeah probably to Lindsay okay um, so I, I wanted of, I wanted to say something Miss Eileen sure uh, I I remember mentioning that uh, I think you have the um, ability to go Twitch partner before, and you're you're doing the right steps, I think, to grow your community by sharing, you know, your knowledge base and encouraging people. Look, look what I learned! It's, it's amazing, and I, I'm glad to uh, just enjoy the ride and just watch watch the um, community and and your your network grow thank you thank you so much alfredo and before i go with that i'm going to put this comment up here because we're going to we're going to sue apple because why does it keep auto correcting my name <laughs> <laughs> lindsay i'm just assuming that you're on iphone because i know it does it to me it doesn't want to understand how to spell my name but <laughs> but thank you honey i well at least i just want to make sure that you knew because sometimes you may have to search for me for something and also when i share those branded links um then i always say eileen i-l-e-a-n-e -E. and so at least i know you got it <laughs> um, and, and, and just watching and learning okay god thank yeah. you and one of the one one of the tips you've been giving me, Miss Eileen, is uh, you know, keep things simple. Don't confuse the, uh, you know, don't have too many distracting things in my view. I I, I do apologize for the uh, <laughs> the distraction behind me. That's okay. You were a guest, so and it was totally unexpected because you know I always do things impromptu. Wake it up. <laughs> I love that about you. <laughs> Okay, so Soro so or so yes, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. He just got here and he says, what is the live stream about? We're talking about YouTube. How about that? And that way we're not limited to the topics, okay? okay. And yes, Lindsay says she confirms my suspicions were correct that she was I, on the iPhone. Yeah, and it, I, I, it I, always I, wants to make her name with an A. Yeah, because it's Lindsay. Oh, yeah. I, I, had, a, I had a question, Miss Eileen. Okay, sure. Go ahead. So I, I thought, I mean, I, I didn't realize you were affected by the uh, the lockdown. I, I, I thought you had to always drive to work before, but is that? Is that why you're home? Okay. All right. So this is this is a little bit of a um, side note. Okay. My 
employer was just about to do a renovation. So I was already prepared to be working from home during the uh, renovation. It just so happened as fate would have it. I mean, we did training on LinkedIn to learn how to work remotely. We did, um, we had to throw away a bunch of our files and clean out our desk and all of that. And then also they gave us they, the ability to bring home our hardware Mm. So, which is why I have the stand up desk. But like I said, I'll be able to keep this because whenever they are able to go back and do the renovations, it'll be a permanent in place stand up desk and I won't need right. this. Okay. So then I'm jealous. That was I just, want one too. Yeah. But that was just a small group of us because they're doing one floor at a time. So all of my other coworkers who don't work, on the floor that I work on, it was like some of them weren't even able to go and get their hardware and all that stuff because yes, oh, yeah. in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania is one of the states that had early on said that, no, you only need to go to work if you're a central worker. And yesterday they just decided to close. I'm going to mute your mic. My, uh, they just decided to close schools for the rest of the, of the school year, all the schools and the whole state. Of Pennsylvania. And so, so Rose said he's going to subscribe. I appreciate you for that. And Lindsay's saying, Hey, Reg, back. And uh, I'm not sure why we got the smiley face from Studio Geek, but I'll take it. Thank you, Studio Geek. <laughs> All okay. right. So I want to, I've been talking about uh, the thumbnails and the click through rates. And I sure shared earlier. Um, Brian G. Johnson, but I talked about Roberto Blake. So how did I, I can't even continue this live stream without showing him <laughs> because he is the master of the thumbnails. Uh, Lindsay, honestly, I don't know, but I, it, Lindsay wants to know what, what brand of stand-up desk it is. I don't know, but I, what I'll do is I will update my kit with this because I did pick it out from the Amazon, um, and they ordered it for me. So I have a kit at kit.co slash Eileen. And I have a place where all my live stream gear is. I'm going to the chat. And yes, yeah, yes, I'll yeah. write it. Technically, I don't have a stand-up desk. What I did was uh, my first initial stand-up desk was basically my daughter's empty diaper bag. Uh, box, okay. diaper box. Yeah, so it was like... You know, those stand-up desks, I think about it, they're like a hundred plus dollars. I can't afford it. They're heavy. What can I do to make a stand-up desk? Improvise, improvise. Improvise. Okay. That's that's so, the nature. Okay, yeah, anyway. So here, <laughs> let's just look at Roberto's thumbnails. Amazing. Talk about remember I told you about the having the bright colors. He's mixing the red with the black. And oh my gosh, doesn't it just stand out there? And this one here, OMG. Now this one was him along with Pat Flynn. And actually, we're not even on his channel yet. I just realized that because this is a YouTube creators. So let's go to his channel and see what he's done. And you see, he has 441. Thousand subscribers. <laughs> I can only dream. <laughs> okay, so this is why I, you know, and he talks about tech, but he also talks about entrepreneurship. He talks about YouTube, but you see here how he's not sticking to that one little template, right? Because this is what we used to do. We used to just have this little template that we always had the red background with the white, but he's changed things up. Look, he even has different colors here. Look at this, the purple and the green and all, totally different. But what he does have that's always consistent, the chunky text, mm -hmm. high mm -hmm. contrast. And there's my boy Nick Nimmin there on this particular video, high contrast. So see, he's, He's switching up and he's moving into this whole purple and greenish or uh, the little bit of blue there, color wave that he's switching into, testing it out, testing it out. Now, also, um, if you have TubeBuddy, which I highly recommend a TubeBuddy. Here comes another one of those Eileen links again, y'all. Uh, I, I signed up the first time you talked about it and I love it. Now, I think you do need to be on the 
one of the paid versions, TubeBuddy has a tool that you can do A, B testing of your mm -hmm. thumbnails. Now, I know somebody's saying, A, B testing, what the heck is she talking about? <laughs> Uh, a B testing is a mechanism whereby sometimes viewers will see one thumbnail and then sometimes they'll see a different thumbnail. Okay. So you want to do that on a video that's, you know, it's got views. You don't want to do this on a video where you only got like 200, 300 views. Okay. You want to do it on a video that's got, you know, you're, you're seeing that as people are clicking, but they're just not like, I know now that my click through rate for my whole channel is like 5%, 5%, right? I go back and I find a video that maybe has a thousand views on it, but the click through rate is only 3%. So I know I'm missing out on views, right? Cause right. it's below my average. Right. But I, I thought that thumbnail was a winner. What the heck? I'm not sure. Well, I don't know how to change it. I don't know. So you, you can, can test it. Test the A-B test. And that's really getting in, down to the nitty gritty and into the weeds. And I actually have not done that yet, to be perfectly honest with you. But there's tons of tutorials out there. In fact, TubeBuddy has a fantastic walkthrough on their channel. My friend, Andrew Kahn. I'm sorry, Andrew Can. It starts with a K. It's, and sometimes I mispronounce it, but it's Can. And it's if he can do it, then you can too. Andrew Can is the person who does the two buddy videos. And he's done a recent walkthrough video of how the A B testing works. So I will be sure to add a description, a link in the description for that one, because I know a lot of you guys don't even have the paid level. Of oh, I, I love. Too, buddy. It's it's fantastic. I have a question, Eileen, on my thumbnails. So I have been more more than ninety five percent no people in it. Do you think I should start adding people in it? Test absolutely, especially really? with, with me being on your channel. You definitely want to put me. See, I didn't. I didn't have all three of us on that thumbnail yeah. where you got to test and see, and, and it sounds like a lot of work, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so that's, that's, you know, yes. Okay. Don't, don't, don't think I got to go change everything this weekend. Like give yourself a schedule. Just say, okay, for the next um, two weeks, I'm going to work on those titles. Right. Because the titles are even more important than the thumbnail, because if you don't have the right words in the titles, nobody ever going to see your thumbnail. <laughs> All right. Right. If you're talking about, you know, how to survive through work from home or whatever. Right. You don't want to put the covid stuff in your titles yet. No. All right. And we didn't really talk about that that much. But let's just say I'm just used, I just picked that as a topic. Right. So once you start seeing that picking up some traction, then that's when you say, okay, I need to go back and change the thumbnails. Then let's say in June, don't think you're just going to be outside every day because it's June now. Like we're outside again, hopefully, prayerfully. By June, we'll be able to go out again. Then you write on your calendar, oh, now I need to test my thumbnails, put people on them. You know, like I just showed you the example of Brian G. Johnson. He was putting his face on the thumbnails all the time. And then all of a sudden he just put nothing but words. Nothing but words. And his thumbnails started going through the roof. I don't know, just because they stood out. Oh. Okay. They yeah. stood out. So people yeah. have already been used to seeing him because he ranks for a lot of different search terms. So people that have been looking for YouTube tutorials and Brian is just search. He just focuses on YouTube on that channel. He has another channel, but that's all he focuses on is YouTube. Right? So. Yeah. Mine are looking pretty, uh, even though they're different colors and everything, they're, they're pretty looking the same. I need to, that's why I wanted to buy that template uh, packet that you uh, yes. talked about because I do tend to make the same style, I guess right. you could call it. Right. Yeah. And so then you, you're competing against yourself. So even when somebody 
uh, searches for your title. And let's, let's just say they come and they search for natural curiosity, right? Because that's the name of Marion's channel, you guys, natural curiosity, right? Let's just say they come and they search for that. Then they look and they see 15 videos. Well, they don't even know which one to click because they all have the same title, right? So then they're like, you know what? I, I got something else. Like, let me click on something else over here because <laughs> Marion got me confused. I don't know what I want to do. Oh, right? now, now I know why my church content is as popular and searchable. It's always the same title all over the place. Ah. Yeah, I, yes, Alfredo, you definitely are doing that with your thumbnails on your church and the title. Yeah, and and you have the perfect title that you can change it because it's a sermon. Right, right. <laughs> so just title it the sermon. Because <laughs> the only people that are searching for your church YouTube channel are the people from your church. Right, right. right. And they probably already know you got a YouTube channel. Yeah. Right. Yep. Right. So, and and that's fine. Don't get me wrong, guys. That may be fine for you if you're not trying to grow. If that's all you want, you just want the church members to find the channel. You don't care about somebody in Kuala Lumpur finding the channel. Maybe you. Don't. Maybe you don't. <laughs> I won't use your as an example, right? Because of course, you always want to get the message, the good book and the good word out there to everybody in the world, but not using you as an example, right? Right, oh, right. You may not care about somebody finding your channel. But if you want to come uh, around. Yeah, what, what I cared about is getting it out there fast yeah. so that way they can have it. That's, that's what I cared about. For the church members. Yes, so, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah. if you but if you ever want to expand it beyond that, then that's when you need to think about the titles and all that stuff. And your thumbnails, you could have a picture of of the pastor on the pulpit. I'm looking forward to the day that we can get out again because when StreamYard opens up the mobile app. I really want to get out and do more. And so I think my thumbnails will will pop more because I'll be out, right? And taking pictures of stuff. Okay. Instead so of in my house. <laughs> in the meantime, in the meantime, take a look at the app called Prism Studio. Prism Studio. Okay. And it's it's Android and iPhone. Good. Mm -hmm. And Studio Geek, I don't know what I said, but he said, she is true. <laughs> Thank you. I am true. I am the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, I hope at least by June. Yes, Soro. Yes, 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 yes. Let's just all, you know, do everything we can. It's just what they keep saying, flatten that curve. Uh, and that Prism Studio app is a great mobile app, super easy to use. I do have a tutorial somewhere on this channel. Also, D. Nemon, which is Nick Nemon's brother, has a, uh, yeah, but she wants to do, uh, and Studio Geek had introduced us to the Prism Live Studio on desktop, but she wants to do it on her phone. So as, a, as an alternative, because I, I can tell you guys right now, don't wait for StreamYard to come out with the mobile app. Why not? I want them to do it now. Because remember what I said earlier, and not everybody didn't hear this. Yes. Yeah. Did. yes. Right now, StreamYard is focused on stability. Yeah. Okay? Got to understand they're doing, that. They're doing a fantastic job because, look, Facebook is breaking down. They're, they can't, they got all kinds of problems because so many people on the internet now, you know, and um, <clears throat> That's why I'm seeing a spike in my channel because I have titles of things that people are searching for. Now they're not just searching in YouTube, they're on Google searching for Facebook watch parties. Now, nobody cared about that before because they were home, they were out, they were at the gym, they were at the pool. But now everybody's home and they're like, what can I do to bring my family and my friends and my people together? A Facebook watch party, but I don't know how to do that. Let me search. And so they're finding my videos. 
Yay. So I was already there already, you know, and, and this is what you'll find. It, and, and don't get discouraged if you don't see changes right away. This takes time. This is, you know, especially with the saturation of content that's out here right now. Okay. It's going to take time for anybody to start seeing changes. So just be happy with the incremental changes that you do see and uh, just keep building on them and keep building. Then you'll see once you start changing your titles, you'll start seeing that you're getting discovered in search. That's why you always got to check those studio analytics at least once a month. I check them all the time. <laughs> I'm just like oh, always because you can do it on your mobile. They have a creator studio app, which you can do on your mobile and see here. Oh, it's, it's pretty hard for you to see, but you see there that's going up my click through rate. That's showing the last 28 days <clears throat> because, you know, I've been able to change out those thumbnails from some of the ones like this one. I just didn't have time to do a thumbnail. I just wanted to go live. I was being selfish. <laughs> like I didn't do a YouTube video last week. I'm going live since my hair is already fluffed. Mar thanks to Marion and Mary Lou. <laughs> I know. That's okay. I understand. Can't get to the barbershop. <laughs> hey, I got my roommate cutting my hair now. It's like, I don't know. It's not even, but okay. It's at least, you know, not hanging off my ears. Uh, and uh, Studio Geek wants to know, was it a live stream? Yes, it was a live stream, Studio Geek, on Marion's channel. And uh, I think I can get that link for you. It's Marion LaSalle uh, because I did some weird stuff with YouTube. Uh, I, it used to be Natural Curiosity. So I don't know. Okay. Wait, are we talking about the... Uh, uh, yeah, Alfredo, you're sound is monkey so let's just i'm sorry there, there's a mobile phone in the room um so were you talking about the video i was watching earlier uh, i i'm assuming that that's what uh studio geek is asking the question so i'm just gonna assume that's what he's talking about i i have the link open up i was still kind of writing up the notes i can share well, that wait, can you post it in the chat yeah i can post it no in no, the no he said i saw the i saw a link on twitter <laughs> I didn't get, did I share it on Twitter? I don't think I got a chance to share it on Twitter. I shared the uh, Twitch live stream, but you were already there, Studio Geek. So you don't need to go looking for that because you were there. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a Twitch stream, not a, a YouTube stream. No, okay. no, 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 no. Wait, let me say that again. I streamed on Twitch early this morning. Then I was on YouTube with Marion this after, early afternoon. Now I'm on YouTube again. <laughs> You're so, a busy gal. So Studio Geek was on the Twitch that I did early this morning. <laughs> and now he says, I mean, Facebook. Yes, you saw it on Facebook in the patrons group. Yes, that is the right link. Yep. Okay. <laughs> we got, we, we get, we work it out. It may take some time, but we work it out. But anyway, guys, this has been a fantastic stream. It really has. Thank you for inviting us on. Yeah, that's why another I one on the stream yard so I could have some of my friends on. And uh, you said I was meaning the Prism Live video. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Prism Studio and Prism Live. Which one is oh, it that I'm supposed to go to it's on my Prism phone? Prism Live Studio. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. So that video was, um, it could have been a live stream. And so I'm not really, I, I, I can't answer that studio geek. Sorry, <laughs> but uh, I will. Miss um, Eileen. Yeah. Alfredo. Isn't, isn't there a mobile version already for StreamYard? There is no mobile version for StreamYard. Not yet. And Alfredo, I'm sure you know that. <laughs> I've been waiting. Let me tell you, I, I'm ready. I got my oh, mobile yeah. phone ready. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Well, I, we were going down that path, and I, I didn't finish that sentence. 
they are focusing on being have, making the stable platform. Okay, so they right now, I don't I think they're even thinking about. I more. totally get it, and I I encourage them to continue doing that because if they go down, you know, oh. <laughs> Right. You know, because right now, um, StreamYard is one of the best things out there for folks that need to go live. And I thank you again for introducing me to it. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many who are using Zoom. And I just want to say to you guys, just be very careful with those links. There's, I saw a girl today, um, well, I didn't see her, but I saw a post on Facebook from a young lady who did have those people hijack her, her meeting or whatever. <clears throat> Man, my YouTube is hurting so bad. Oh, Dr. Taryn, <laughs> it's been ages since I've seen you. Yes. You could also use the Streamlabs app. Yes. Now I definitely have a video on that as well. And uh, yep. I re I recommend Prism, the Prism one, uh, Alfred. Um, I'm sorry, Studio Geek because it's easier. It's easier to set up. The Streamlabs one is a little, a little bit more intricate. Prism Live is super easy to get. It's almost like comparing Streamyard to Ecamm Live. <laughs> but yeah, yep. Okay, guys. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Marion. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Alfredo, for also coming. He says stability and scalability. Let's see his last comments. Prism is the best streaming platform on mobile. Thank you, Reggie. Reggie came back in with his other alter ego because <laughs> he's Reggie Digital and you saw him earlier as Reg1167. So make sure you follow him and all the places I've been trying to work in real life until all this happened. So now I am back to making gardening vids again. That's going to be a fantastic. That's going to give your channel a boost. Oh my God. Is it ever everybody I know is making gardens in their backyard so they can grow their own vegetables and fruit and all kinds of things. My neighbor's bringing over lettuce and setting it on my, on my tables. And you know, I, it's, that is huge. I yeah. would highly recommend just pumping that up to the max. Yep. Yep. And he says, it's cool to catch you live. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget guys that you can give super chats before we close out. I just want to remind y'all of that. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry. When you do zoom, you need someone to set up well and have a waiting room and all of that. Uh, yeah, but that wasn't the problem, Studio Geek. It's a security problem. But um, yeah, I use a skeleton version of Streamlabs to stream via mobile. Oh, okay, great. Alfredo, you always got some uh, work around some super techie thing that you can't even like explain to other people. Right, yeah, that's like it. <laughs> I'll take the easy one. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, but Zoom is having security issues. Not sure if you heard of heard of that happening to channels. If you're talking about Zoom, yes. And Reggie said, "Oh, I need some toilet paper growing tips." <laughs> <laughs> What's with the toilet paper? I still don't get it, okay? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why people just decided to hoard toilet paper. I I I I, I don't know, but okay. I will say when I went to the market, the last time I went to the market, there also was no Skippy peanut butter. Oh, there was lots of Jif and there was lots of Peter Pan. <laughs> no Skippy? But no Skippy. Cause that's, that's my brand that I like Skippy. No Skippy. <laughs> That's weird. But gif galore. <laughs> so huh. if choosy mothers choose gift, they didn't, they were fine because, but I don't use that. <laughs> oh, and also there was no Hellman's mayonnaise. Plenty no of Hellman's? Plenty of Miracle Whip. Oh, no. <laughs> miracle Whip. Miracle Whip. Oh, Miracle Whip. Top of the shelf, right? <laughs> 
but no helmets. So it wasn't just the toilet paper because the toilet paper and the paper towels are just wiped out in the supermarkets. But I recommend if you're, if this happens in your area and you see people hoarding, it's better to try to go to the drugstores, the targets, and all of that to get your toilet paper or Sam's Club if you have a Sam's Club. But you may have to go back because Sam's Club will run out. Like when they get that truck, there's people there waiting. <laughs> They're like, I see toilet paper. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> this is getting crazy. Yeah. yeah, it is. yeah. I know. And Alfredo says, sometimes I have to do the stealth Alfredo Ninja and make my channel content unique. Okay, good, Alfredo. I'm glad you're getting inspired. And if you have issues, buy tissues. <laughs> Rodney, you're a poet, even if you didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Studio Geek's talking about NYC. And uh, I just did a video on the easiest victor victory potato garden. It is a super easy vegetable to grow. Big bang for the buck. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, potatoes. Yes, yes, yes. Last time I streamed to YouTube, I showed how salvage a cracked phone screen. Okay. So you did something that was totally out of character for your channel. And a lot of people will need that. Now, with these newer iPhones, I don't think you need that. I So far, I'm just going to knock on wood. Yeah, find some wood. That's below the stand-up desk. Uh, uh, because even the, when you buy the outer box now, it doesn't even give you, because this is all glass. It does, Well, whatever they code it, I don't know. I don't know the technique. You know it. what? I got to disagree. I got a crack in my brand new iPhone well, 10 Which one 11. is it? I think it's 10 or 11 or yes. I don't know. Really? You do yeah, have a crack? I do. Ooh. Down at the bottom. Okay. I, you can't really tell, but so what you been? You can. What have you been dropping it on the concrete? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, it was just uh, on the regular floor, tile floor. Okay. Whoop. All right. So Alfredo says I should make a stream about mental health because of the self isolation occurs with people. I agree Absolutely. with that. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a fantastic topic. I don't have a problem with it. I am actually liking it, and I'm I could get used to being home a lot more. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. And Dr. Taryn says my numbers are down. I have almost a hundred thousand subs, but my vid, vids only get like three hundred views. So I think my channel got throttled. Have you ever heard that happen, Eileen? Well, uh, Dr. Taryn, you're changing topics on your channel. So throttled may be um, just a terminology that you might hear some people talking about on YouTube. But if I'm not mistaken, you were talking about one thing. When I first met you, it's got to be a good five or six years now, you were focused on one thing on your channel. And then you started talking about something different. And I think that's when your channel kind of skyrocketed. Now you're talking about gardening, which is, again, something different. So this is what we're talking about here. People are subscribing to your channel for a certain kind of content. Those 300,000 people wanted to hear what you had to say about blank, whatever that was. Now you're talking about blank and they're like, no, I'm not interested in blank or I don't I'm not interested in hearing that from you. They may want to start gardens, but they don't know you as a gardener. Like, well, what did you just start gardening yesterday? They don't know. <laughs> okay. And so <laughs> I have to go. Eileen, I okay. love you. All right. Love you too, dear. Thank you so much for coming. Yes. Thank and you we're for having me. Out. So, yeah. Gardening was my main focus. And then I wanted to talk about stuff. Yeah. You jump around and then you're a subscriber.
Okay.